Welcome back. Today we are doing module number nine, their second guided lab of module number nine. And as you know, module number nine is about securing user applications and data access. So this lab is about encrypting data at rest by using AWS encryption options. So let's try to understand the main objective of this lab. So the goal of this lab is to learn how to protect data at rest in AWS by applying different encryption options we'll also configure and test encryption settings on aws storage services so that sensitive data is secure even if someone gains access to the underlying storage so um, why are we doing it and what's the main purpose of it so first of all we'll learn enable encryption on aws services uh, we'll work with the services such as amazon s3 ebs and rds to apply the encryption at trust we'll choose between aws management or the managed keys or the customer managed keys using AWS key management and we'll understand the key management like we we'll learn how can we handle encryption keys behind the scenes and complete difference between uh, the AWS managed encryption and KMS uh, custom key usage. Finally, we'll verify the encryption by confirming the storage data object as three volumes, EBS, uh, databases and RDS uh, is encrypted automatically. So um, by doing all this, we'll ensure that all sensitive data is stored in AWS encrypted at rest and then we'll gain hands-on practice on key MS, key, KMS keys and then we'll learn how uh, the encryption can be applied without changing the application mode. So it is required for security and compliance. It would teach us defense in depth. Then we learned the transparency of cryptographic operations and then a customer control with KMS. You can manage the key rotation access policies and audit usage, etc. So the duration of the lab is 30 minutes. Um, as you can see on AWS cloud, we have an encrypted EBS volume, which is a lab instance. And then we have an image bucket and we have AWS management uh, or the key management uh, uh, system where we will be managing the key. So by the end of the lab, you'll create an architecture by checking these things that first of all your EBS volume uh, would be attached to your encrypted EBS volume and then further uh, the lab instance would be making sure that IEM and policies of that are properly enforced. Uh, once that's attached um, we'll have the cloud uh, trail events and uh, we'll have the information in that so they are explaining about all those things like always start the lab and we'll start working on task number one where we'll review default encryption for objects in s3 so in this task we'll upload the image file to s3 bucket and review the default encryption which is provided by s3 you'll click on download the file image and download the files and then we'll go to our management console and we'll choose the buckets and try to follow these steps which are there in task number one. So let's get started. So our lab environment is ready. Now we'll have to download the file that they mentioned in the instructions manual. So for that, we'll click on download the file named clock.png and save it on your computer. So once the file is downloaded, we'll go to our management console and type S3 and click on this one. Then you'll see your multi-purpose bucket. So we'll click on this one and then we'll upload the file that we have just downloaded. So we'll click upload and we'll select the clock image that we downloaded earlier. After that, we'll click on permissions. And in this one, we'll select grant public read access, click on I understand and grant the access and click upload. After that, we can close this window. So we have followed the steps up to point number 14. After that, they are saying to open the properties of the clock and uh, uh, make the changes for the server side encryption and uh, rest of the steps. So now we'll follow these steps. So now if you want to see further properties of this one, you'll click on the image and under the uh, image properties, you can see first of all that the key image is there. It has its public or object URL. You can click on this one and view it from here. Further, 
if you'll see you'll find the server side encryption settings here and uh, it is already encrypted and it says that the server side encryption protects the data at rest and they are providing some information about that we are not going to make any changes here but in case if you want to see you can see some more details about this thing over here so we'll go back to our bucket and uh, We'll start working on our task number two for creating a AWS key. In this task, we'll create a customer managed AWS key uh, and then later in the lab, we'll use AWS key um, that you will create to generate and encrypt and decrypt the file. So for that, we'll have to go to key management service and then we'll start creating the keys and would name it something and they are giving it a name so we can copy it from here that we'll give it an alias as my KMS key and then rest of these steps. So now we'll search for key management service and click on this one. So since we are dealing in customer managed keys, we'll click on this one and then we'll click on create key. So we'll not make any changes here. We'll keep it as symmetric and encrypt and decrypt and then press next. And then we'll paste the um, alias that we copied earlier. Then after that, we'll create next. And in this one, we'll have to search for walk keys or walk lab. So we'll select on this one, press next. Again, we'll search for walk and uh, we'll select walk labs, press next. And here also you can see the policy, uh, the JSON script that uh, we read earlier. We are not making any changes there. Press next. You can review the options, the settings that you have selected already and click finish. Now, as you can see that it has just created a my KMS key and you can see the details of it over here. Now we are starting task number three. In this one, we'll be creating and attaching encrypted data volume to EC2 instance. So in this instance, we'll have to uh, go to our EC2 instances and then we'll have to um, attach it to the storage. So that's what they are saying that in this task, we'll create encrypted EBS volume using the KMS you created the, in the previous task. And then we'll attach it to the EC2 instance when the um, when we'll attach the encrypted volume to EC2 instance, it would receive data from AWS key, KMS and would use it to decrypt and encrypt the data for the EBS volume. So we'll search for EC2 volume over here. Click on this one. And here you can see that one instance is already running. So if we'll click on this one, we can see the lab instance running. So if we would like to see the details of this instance, we'll click on this one. And here you can find the instance ID, its public IP address and rest of the things which are um, under this instance. But the thing that we are interested in is the storage of it. So we'll click on it and you can see that there is only one volume attached to it, which is this one of eight gigabyte. Further, you can see the volume monitoring, like you can change it for three hours. What were the activities taking place on this volume? So we'll click on networking over here and just keep an eye on the availability zone ID and availability zone of this storage. So we'll have to uh, keep a record of it. I'll copy it and place it on my notepad file. So we have covered up to here. Now they are asking us to create a volume. And in order to create a volume, we'll have to go to the um, create volume and create volume. And then uh, we'll have to make sure that we are following all these steps. So in order to create a volume, you'll see on your left hand side under elastic block store. And in this one, I'm going to click on volumes and create a volume up here. So according to the instructions, we'll keep the volume type as general purpose uh, SSD. And for the size, we'll change it to one GB. Now for the availability zone, remember we copied it earlier. So in my case, it was US East 1D. You can select it according to your situation. And then finally, we'll select uh, the encryption on this one. So we'll encrypt using the KMS key that we created earlier, which was my KMS key. 
and then I'll go down will not make any changes here and create a volume now wait for a while after that refresh it so that you can see the newly created one uh, when it becomes available you can see the size of it as 1 GB and if you'll click on it you can get rest of the details about this one and um, as we selected the availability zone as US East 1D um, it is here and uh, rest of the status and the size of it is appearing over here so we will have to take an action on this one and then we'll attach it to a volume we'll click on this one so in the instructions that's what they are saying to click on actions attach the volume attach the volume to the instance and we'll have to select um, this one and then we'll attach the volume so in the list i'll select the instance that we have then under the device name we'll select the devsdf and after that select attach volume so now you can see that it has attached it and uh, these are the details for this one next they are saying to go back to the instances then click on your instance that you created earlier and after that we'll click on storage and here you can see under the volume that we just created which is this one um, it shows uh, dev sdf and you can even see the kms id which is appearing right in front of it so we have checked and now we are starting task number four we're disabling the encryption key and observing the effect so in this one we'll temporarily disable the kms key that we created earlier to use the or to encrypt the ebs volume so when we we'll disable it we'll observe the effects of it in disabling the t in accessing the encrypted data now again we'll go to our key management service then under the customer managed keys remember the key that we created earlier we'll click on that one and you can see the details for this one but since we want to disable the key we'll select this one and then under the actions we'll disable it it would ask you that are you sure you want to disable just click confirm and disable the key now here in the status you'll notice that this key has been disabled now so after disabling the key now the next step is to detach the data volume from EC2 instance and in that we'll navigate to EC2 console we'll click on volumes and then we'll detach the volume so we'll click on EC2 instances and then under elastic block store we'll click on volumes and here we'll see the two volumes but we are going to select the one that we created recently we'll click on this one and then we'll go to actions and we'll select detach volume and we'll detach it now next they are explaining that if you have detached it and if you'll try to attach it again you'll see that the encrypted volume is unable to access the KMS key and they're talking about the history of it so you can check it that what are the things on the JSON file and check on the events records on this one since the key was disabled uh, so these are just instructions about that one and then they are just asking you to go to the events history to attach the volume and see the events which are appearing there so you can try all those things on your own we are moving to the task number five by analyzing the um, KMS activity using the cloud trail and in cloud trail we'll click on the events history and we'll click on the event resources and we'll see all these details over there so let's click on cloud trail and press enter and in this one on our left hand side and once it would open click on here and on left hand side click on event history so you'll be able to see a range of events which it is actually capturing so out of these we are interested in disable key so we are going to click on this one and here 
This is the history of the key disable, which details they were showing in the instructions manual. So you'll read the details in this one. Now, in order to check it again, we'll go to key management service and we'll click on this one. And now we'll try to enable the key here again. So we'll select the key that we created earlier and then we'll click on action and enable the key again and as you can see that it has shown a message that the key has been enabled and if you'll go to the customer managed keys again you'll be able to see this key and if you'll see the details of this one the status is appearing as enabled over here as well next we'll go back to our ec2 instance again and click on volumes on our left hand side and here we'll select the storage that the volume we created click on actions and click on attach volume and like earlier we'll select the first option in this one and here we'll type in dev sdf and then attach volume in the last step they are saying for key rotation and uh, we'll enable the automatic key rotation now they are explaining that it is required to rotate the kms keys due to business or contract rules government regulations etc for compliance and governance so aws key support uh, the automatic key rotation only for the symmetric encryption keys so we'll do it by going to key management service again uh, so let's do it so we'll click on key management service and then we'll have to select the KMS key that we created earlier and here under the key material or rotation we'll click on this one and here as you can see the automatic key rotation is disabled by default we'll click on add it and we'll enable it and you can even define that you want to rotate it for how many days usually um, it is saying that 90 to 2560 days so we'll keep it as default and click save and as you can see now that the key rotation has been enabled as well so that was our second guided lab on module number nine which is securing user application and data access so in this lab we learned how to use aws rotation features to protect the data at rest and uh, we further looked at the secure storage of the sensitive information using aws management keys and customer management keys um, and it is a very important step in compliance and risk reduction by following the best practices of aws services that's it for today thank you very much